This is Just Tool Basics, and today we're talking about different kinds of wire gauges. Hello everyone, welcome to Just Tool Basics. Today's topic is wire gauges. This is kind of a part two. And really, this video is all about making sure you buy the right thing and the thing you mean to buy. Because while all of these things look like they're basically the same, and if you look at the markings, they all talk about that they are wire gauges. However, these five wire gauges measure four different scales of wire gauge. And we're going to go into some nerdliness a bit and kind of go into the depth of the background of some of these wire gauges and what they're used for. But really, this just is a, an elaborate warning for be careful because you may be not buying what you intend to buy. And will get incorrect readings because you'll be talking a different scale and different language than uh, perhaps the store you're buying from or, or someone in the, someone that you're dealing with that, you know, <laughs> knows what they're talking about. So uh, it's worth being careful, buying the right thing so that you're positive that you're measuring your material to the standard that the world ex expects you to be measuring it to. So... In the previous video about wire gauges, we talked at some length about American wire gauge, American standard wire gauge, and that's what these two measure. Uh, I would say watch that video for kind of a more robust discussion of them. And very quickly, just so that, you know, we are doing a quick throwback to how you use this thing is the gauges are marked around the face, it goes from zero around to 30 and then 31 through 36 is on these extension parts. On the back is a decimal rep representation of those same gauges and all of these adhere to that system. It's just that the gauge numbers and the decimal numbers are not the same across them. This one is made from measuring non-ferrous solid wire and the way that you figure that out is you're paying attention to the gap, not the round part, and you're just finding the slot that it fits into snugly. So this is 10 gauge wire, it fits snugly into the 10 gauge. It does not fit into the 11 gauge, no matter how hard we try. Well, I guess I can try hard enough, it's just copper. And the nine is too loose, so we can say that this is 10 gauge. So that's what these two are. This would be my most commonly used set of these things. And lastly, let's, you know, talk about the kind of the origin of, of these. I'll put this one down. Um, like I said, American Standard Wire Gauge, AWG, is the standard abbreviation. Uh, it was developed by Brown and Sharp, so it's also called the Brown and Sharp Wire Gauge, developed back in uh, 1857. And uh, while it's designed for wire... People do use it for non-ferrous sheet and plate and things like that. However, officially, each of those things have their own gauge system. So be careful. Um, I would say refer to uh, make, make sure that your, your gauge is referring to the same set of decimals on the back or uh, correlating to the, the correct decimal. As I mentioned, this wheel is a 0 to 36. That is point. 325 inches, 30, 325 thousandths, down to 5 thousandths, which is 0 0.005 right there. That's 36 gauge. This is 0 gauge. 325 is 0 gauge. Now, this wheel, the W and M standard, which is the Washburn and Moen standard, uh, this is also called um, American Steel Wire Gauge, SWG. Also, Standard wire gauge, SWG, just to be extra confusing. Sometimes called the U.S. steel wire gauge, but SWG is the common abbreviation of this. It can also be called a Roebling gauge, by the way, which uh, I only found while researching this video, and I never heard it called that in real life. But, you know, there you go. Now, this is for measuring steel wire and drill rods. And, and the drill measurement is the one that I use this for, is... Uh, getting drill sizes. Now, this zero gauge is 306 and a half thousandths, or 3,065 ten thousandths if you 
want to say it weird, I guess, but 0. 0.3065 down to its 36 gauge is nine thousandths. Technically 89 ten thousandths, but whatever, nine thousandths is close enough. And this one is marked nine thousandths, even though, again, a little bit of rounding. Now this is the British standard wire gauge. This is also known as the Birmingham wire gauge or sometimes the Stubbs iron wire gauge. I'm sure you won't be surprised that this is used for measuring iron wire and sheet steel, just to be confusing because of that steel wire version before, but this is used to measure sheet steel. And uh, most curiously is that while this is a relatively less used scale, it is the system by which hypodermic needles are metal measured still to this day. So there you go. Uh, honestly, I only have this because I found that in the state sale and it was in a lovely condition and I like stare at tools. So I bought it because it was, you know, five bucks or whatever it was. One of the problems with this, and if you look at these, these gaps and kind of note that they don't have a mathematical progression that's because they don't have a mathematical progression. And so this is generally considered kind of a pain in the butt scale because the gaps are arbitrary. This was derived from a drawing out count um, where now this wheel doesn't have a zero gauge, but it started at zero gauge and it was drawn down once for this size, twice for this size, seven times for this size and so forth. However many times it was drawn through those drawing out dies is the gauge that it was. And that was the Birmingham system and what became eventually the, the English standard. Now, not being mathematically derived is obviously going to be a pain in the butt for some people, and that's why it has become a relatively obsolete standard. Now, the last wire gauge wheel that I have here. Now, this, this I don't like. I bought this wheel because I was trying to find a economical option. Um, not that these are terribly expensive. I mean, this is 20 bucks. Uh, however, the Starrett versions are more expensive, which is you know, typical of Starrett, made in the USA, all sorts of loveliness there. But, you know, this was eight or nine bucks. Uh, and I ordered it because it was advertised as a, an SWG gauge, which I figured I could use for, you know, measuring wire, things like that. And that way I don't have to bang up the, the Starrett version. And when it arrived, and, and notably they don't give a good display of, of how this is laid out. So I just ordered it because, you know, I figured it, it would be worth having even if it was, you know, a relatively low quality. It's it's decent quality. I mean, similar thickness. It feels nice, has good heft. These things, the numbers seem engraved nicely on both sides. The problem is I couldn't figure out what scale it was. This starts at uh, 312 and a half thousandths and goes down to seven thousandths. I don't know what scale that is. And so I... I've ended up just kind of scrolling through various scales of different materials. And I figured out that this thing, despite it being labeled as a standard wire gauge, SWG, it said it multiple times in the description, this thing is stainless steel sheet material gauges. Like how useful is that as a garbage thing? And it makes no sense. And this is a, a terrible format for that. Like normally with... Um, sheet material it's like a little card with notches in it because it's much more convenient it doesn't get stuck in your pocket like this thing is a spiky pain in the butt thing it's it's it goes fine in a tool belt but you know it's not what you want to carry around dealing with metal and things and stabbing yourself in the hip anyway so you got to be careful because these things are they have very deceptive descriptions and it's just unfortunate so don't buy this thing it's a terrible idea make sure if you're buying it i mean again commonly awg make sure it's from 325 thousandths down to five thousandths that is the scale you want and i will have a link to this one which like i said is well it's a screen printed they seem nice and bold i mean maybe they're engraved slightly actually yeah there's a little bit of texture here so yeah they're engraved uh a little bit shallow but still plenty good unless you're sanding it or something it'll be it'll last for a long time you know it's a little less heft than this you know it's a little thinner and all that but 
you know, if you if you want the Starrett, I'm I'm not gonna discourage you. Obviously, I, I like Starrett stuff a lot, but uh, it's probably not necessary. Anyway, I think that's all we have. Be careful with your purchases. Uh, I'll actually have links to all of these things, just so if you're interested, you can at least kind of have that as a starting point if you're if you're you know want to use it to search for something, or if, if one of these seems super useful to you, fantastic. Anyway, until next time. This is Just Tool Basics.